Hello class, today we will be discussing the wonders of the Texas Revolution and how it affects our- No! That is not how we learn! Hi, I'm Court. And I'm Drake. Now, today we actually will be talking about the Texas Revolution, and that is not a joke. But don't want to groan, because the Texas Revolution is actually a very awesome story to hear about. And it all started with an idea called the Enlightenment. Think of the Enlightenment as something as a light bulb appearing over one's head, like an idea popping up or people getting smarter. The main thing that the Enlightenment went against was an idea called the Divine Right of Kings. The divine right of kings was the idea that God chose a man and all of his sons to rule a certain area and all its people. The Enlightenment then led to a man named Father Hidalgo making a very inspirational speech. The name of this speech was Grito de Dolores. The speech was given on September 16th, 1810, which is now known as Mexican Independence Day, even though Mexico didn't get independence from Spain for another 10 years. This speech inspired many to stand up against Spain and actually led to Mexico getting its independence on August 24th, 1821. How is September 16th, 1810 an important date to the Mexican people? We'll give you 10 seconds to answer. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. We hope you had time to answer. But if you didn't, that's okay because the answer is it is Mexican Independence Day. Now, the real beginning of Texas was with a man named Stephen F. Austin, who brought 300 families to the area. He, but he wasn't looking for normal families. He was looking for good character people who followed rules and had special skills, just like all of you sitting in your classroom. The first 300 people that Stephen F. Austin brought to Texas were nicknamed the Old 300. What were the nickname given to the 300 people that traveled with Stephen F. Austin to Texas? We'll give you 10 seconds to answer. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. I hope you had time to answer. Now the answer is the old 300. Many people liked the idea of moving to Texas, but instead of selling their homes like you and I would, they just up and left and went to Texas, leaving signs at their homes saying GTT or Gone to Texas. With everyone living in Texas, they had to live in a certain area called Colonial Texas, sort of like living in a wooded area with most people owning a wooden home and wooden furniture. Texas and Mexico were on way different grounds whenever it came to government. I mean, Mexico had a government that was called a centralist government. Centralist means that the government wants all the power to themselves, and the people don't get any say in what happens and what goes on. Now, the Texans did not like centralist government, but they wanted something called states' right government. And states' rights was basically giving power to Texas and all of its citizens to make laws, to vote, to do whatever they wanted. Almost like it is today. States' rights were given to the Texas people through the Constitution of 1824. This made everybody in Texas just very, very happy with Mexico. States' rights give who the right to make their own laws and rules? We'll give you 10 seconds to answer. 10. 9. 8. 7. 6. 5. 4. 3. 2. 1. 
I hope you had time to answer. But if you didn't, that's okay, because the answer is states' rights give states the right to make their own laws and rules. Or in this case, Texas or their citizens. Hey, hey, Sergeant Johnny. Uh, yeah? Hey, I have an idea. You know that states' right that, like, Texas loves? Uh, yeah, what about it? We should, like, totally take that away. That will definitely make them happy. Uh, are you sure about- Yes, I'm sure about this. That's a really good idea. I, I bet they won't want to, like, go against us or anything. Alright, uh, let's see. What's the day today? Um, April 6th, 1830. Then we'll call it the Law of April 6th, 1830, and we'll take away all their stuff that they actually like. Now, all joking aside, the law of April 6, 1830, really did take away most things that the majority of Texas really did like, and it made Texas very, very angry. What law took away states' rights, which Texas really enjoyed? We'll give you ten seconds to answer. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. Now, we hope you had enough time to answer. Now, if you didn't, that's okay, because the answer is the law of April 6th, 1830. You know what, Texas? We're really tired of all you stuff you're doing. Attack! Attack! Now, this battle was called the Battle of Velasco, and it was the first battle where Texans and Mexicans shot at each other. The aftermath of it was... 10 Texans dead, and 5 Mexicans dead. And the only reason Mexico didn't win this battle is because they ran out of ammo to shoot. What was the first battle in which Mexicans and Texans first fired at one another? We'll give you 10 seconds to answer. 10. 9. 8. 7. 6. 5. 4. 3. 2. 1. We hope you had time to answer. But if you didn't, that's okay, because the answer is the Battle of Velasco. Conventions of 1832 and 33 were the Texans and the Mexicans working together to try and agree on one set of laws. Stephen F. Austin was chosen as the messenger for the Texas side. The conventions ended up bringing most of the Constitution's advantages back. The next major battle in the Revolution was the Battle of Gonzales. This was caused by Texas having a cannon that Mexico very much so wanted. Mexico sent an army to go and collect the cannon. When Texas heard this news, they decided that they didn't want to run away and hide. They stood and they fought. When Texas fired the cannon, Mexico was so scared they just ran away, leaving Texas with another victory. Which battle showed that Texas wasn't afraid to use military force? We'll give you 10 seconds to answer. 10. 9. 8. 7. 6. 5. 4. 3. 2. 1. We hope you had time to answer. But if you didn't, that's okay, because the answer is the Battle of Gonzales. Another convention, the Convention of 1836, put Sam Houston in charge of Texas's military forces. This is William Barrett Travis, the leader of the Alamo's resistance. This is James Bowie, who was originally the leader, but then was struck and ill. And this is David Crockett, who was a hero, but you may find out that he wasn't as heroic as you all may think he is. Now, as you can see, it was a massacre. And in the end, Mexico defeated Texas. But this wasn't the final battle. No, there were more to come. But Mexico won this battle, with Davy Crockett trying to escape with two other men, or even more, the survivors, and was killed trying to surrender to Santa Ana, the leader of the Mexican army. William Barrett Travis was among the first to die, being killed defending the wall, while James Bowie, being very sick, lying down in his bed, defended his ground, but was still killed, leaving Mexico with a win for the Battle of the Alamo. Which battle is the most famous battle in the Texas Revolution, led by William Barrett Travis? We'll give you 10 seconds to answer. 10. 9. 8. 7. 6. 5. 4. 3. 2. 1. We hope you had time to answer. But if you didn't, that's okay because the answer is the Battle of the Alamo. Now this next event that I'm going to talk about is the Goliad Massacre. This angered more Texans than ever before. 
See, what happened was, a group of Texans that were prisoners of war were going home for, after being prisoners for a very long time. They were all in a single file line walking home when the Mexicans open fired. Very few Texans escaped alive, but the ones that did told their story and rallied together Texans all over the state. What massacre rallied almost everyone in Texas to fight the final battle in the Texas Revolution? We'll give you ten seconds to answer. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. We hope you had time to answer. But if you didn't, that's okay because the answer is the Goliad Massacre. <laughs> The Battle of San Jacinto was the first major battle the Texans won. The reason that we believe the Texans fought so well is because we were so rallied up from the Goliath Massacre and the Alamo. Hence the term, Remember the Alamo and Remember Goliath. What was the final battle of the Texas Revolution where Texas defeated Mexico, captured Santa Ana, and successfully ended the revolution? We'll give you 10 seconds to answer. 10. 9. 8. 7. 6. 5. Four, three, two, one. We hope you had time to answer. But if you didn't, that's okay, because the answer is the Battle of San Jacinto. All right, guys, we put it up to vote, and uh, the majority of Texans actually voted that we should join the U.S., but unfortunately, uh, the U.S. had already, you know, offered us to join way long ago, and we kind of declined them. So they got this mindset like, no, you already declined us. Why should we accept you now? So yeah, they kind of declined us. But you know what? We we are going to become our own, uh, our own country, and we are going to be a republic. Are you guys? Do you guys agree with that? Yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. All okay. right, we agree. Okay. What is Texas now, and what does it use and or have? We'll give you a hint. Texas now has control over its state better. And it can make its own laws. We'll give you ten seconds to answer. Ten. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four. Three. Two. One. We hope you have time to answer. But if you didn't, that's okay, because the answer is, Texas became a republic after the revolution, but now we're part of the United States, and we had and still have states' rights. Today, Texas is part of the United States, and we got what we really wanted all along. States', States rights. rights. Now, that means we get to make our own laws due to our region and area, and we all get to be very happy with our lives. And Texas, obviously, did end up winning the revolution, although having a bunch of setbacks. Well, we thank you for watching us, and uh, we hope you have a nice day. This is Drake. And Court. Out. Off.